Forest Green Rovers are currently the worst team in England right now. Sitting rock bottom of the fourth tier in 24th place, looking destined for relegation and potential deletion from FC25. Ooh. Now in steps the cult hero Troy Deeney, who's been appointed his first managerial job, being promoted from a player manager now in charge of the greenest club in the world. It's going to be a baptism of green fire for the former Watford legend. And he is starting from the bottom in every sense. At 35, he now becomes one of the youngest managers in the country and has a main mission of keeping this club afloat. Not only rescue them and take over their current situation, but take this one and a half star outfit all the way to become world champions. And because this appointment is so new and EA haven't updated the squads yet, Troy Deeney is still on the roster. He's playing and managing at the same time. Yeah, this rebuild is going to be a little bit funky. Starting up front in this evergreen 4-4 effing 2, with our highest rated player retiring and hanging up the boots this season. Our recruitment for the world's first vegan-only football club has to be on par, considering the talent available to us right now isn't really exciting me all too much. And we have around £3 million or less to play with. We're gonna have to find some hidden gems, some free agents, some career mode RTG classics if we are to take this team all the way and compete in this modern football landscape. I've tried to match the energy and I've picked out one of the greenest things I could find. It's not Rover's green, but I'm trying to get into the spirit at least and if you go on to enjoy the video make sure to drop it a like down below subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any content coming and let me know down below what are the manager club combos should we test out in career mode and take for a spin in FC24 now the first order of business is to sort out some budget signings we got to organize this defensive unit ASAP and with these two pickups I think I've got our next center back partnership on lock for the next 10 years we've got some quality deals over the line here including the young up-and-coming Spurs youth prospect. He's English, he's homegrown. It's Ashley Phillips arriving for 630k. Next up, he's a road to glory favorite. He's face scanned in. He's an Italian stallion. He's just like me for real. And he's shaking hands with Troy Deeney. Linking up with Phillips at the back. It's going to be Fabio Sciarodia arriving from Germany. We agreed to deal with Borussia Mönchengladbach for 800k. And that's the majority of our budget gone just like that. So that's why we've had to shift our transfer market strategy to the free agent sector. We need as many basement bargain deals as possible and that's why I've opted for quite the versatile right back. We've got the 16 year old no more arriving on a free. Don't you worry this northern Irishman is going to come in handy. He can play a right back, right wing back and centre back and is already showing great potential so he might be a lovely find. Now we're creating quite the young core and that's exactly how I want my recruitment to go down. Focusing on the youth, focusing on the future and this kid ever since FC 24 dropped emerged as a cult hero, a cult favourite for us. RTG career modes. It's the Scotsman coming through from Hibernian Lennon Miller. It's our first swap deal of the rebuild, 100k, and the Scotsman signs on the dotted line alongside another teenage talent arriving from the south coast. He's now going to be up here at Forest Green. It's Samuel Amo Amio. As we had to pull the strings behind the scenes with two swap deals in a row. This is just the beginning. We are loaded for the future, people. Now I've promised myself that I only want to rely on this free agents tactic for the first couple of seasons. I don't want to become a free agents only rebuild but when you see an opportunity like this the Kiwi Marco Stamenic he's unemployed ready to be signed and he's gonna be our sixth transfer made by Dini he becomes a forest green rover he is now the highest rated player on the team by far we've got a new king in town and he reigns from down under and this Kiwi powerhouse all of a sudden we've signed him and he's become an exciting prospect what is going on I've just been blessed by the career mode gods now after a couple of minor sales that's freed up some cash in the budget and we've been able to make our final purchase of the summer a brand new right midfielder the Paraguayan Enzo Gonzalez Wolves are allowing us to get the 18 year old on a permanent basis I think he low key has a face scan in the game I can't tell if that's actually real or a really decent custom face that you have done for the lad nonetheless we've had to cough up 800k and our finances are now reduced to pennies with two CDMs operating in the middle we've got most of our new recruits implemented into the starting 11 with the likes of Gonzalez and Miller ready to come off the bench. I'm hoping for at least a mid-table finish because we haven't started off the season too hot. And Dini's Rovers have been revolutionized this season, gaining automatic promotion. They have absolutely blitzed it with 84 points, joint top, not officially champions, but that has got them moving up to the third tier. Because as long as we find progress every season, I don't really care about the other little domestic cups like the FA Cup. However, over in the Carabao, we made a 
quite a deep run through a fourth tier squad over in the quarterfinals, losing out to Manchester United 4-2. Hopefully, future opposition and giving them a run for their money. As the AFL trophy, the old Papa John's, we were like nowhere to be seen, knocked out in round three to Barnsley. Nevertheless, we are locked in and fully loaded, given Troy Deeney's playing career and seen it off in the best way possible. He's had his farewell, but how did the team fare? Who was our top goal scorer? Matthew Stevens. Our number nine bag, 21 goals up top with Callum Morton. The English duo with 35 goals between them. That was a partnership for the ages as Deeney off the bench had a few cameos in there, but he's going to hang up the boots for real and just focus on managing this club to glory as we have Amo Ameo, the ex-Southampton Academy product with 14 goal contributions, Holland with seven goals and three, and the Kiwi Stamenic, who was quite literally a championship, possibly even Premier League quality player. He was a key protagonist in our promotion push, and Enzo Gonzalez impressed on the right with five goals and seven. Lennon Miller also had a nice little breakout campaign. The Scotsman still only 17. There is so much youth and talent on this roster. From bottom of the English footballing pyramid of real life to getting promoted to League One, they've come a long way so far and there's still so much more work to do. As this time we have roughly around five million pounds to spend, so not much of an improvement and we're still gonna have to be quite frugal about our transfer business. Now the first task on our to-do list in season two was to upgrade the man in the middle of the sticks and we've had to opt for a free agent because the money is just so tight right now. There are so many opportunities to take advantage of. So Forest Green Rovers will get a brand new number one shot stopper, the Frenchman, Jonathan Moulin, coming through as a free agent and already comes in as a major upgrade on our starting goalie. Lads, hear me out. I think I've found a Troy Deeney's regen. I've had a look, I've done my scouting and I think Jake Hall, the 18 year old English striker, again, another free agent and God damn, he is a short king. Like I swear that guy is like half the size of the door. Nonetheless, we've got to double check this though if he's got the same birthday as Mr. Deeney, the 29th of June, then Halsey is the real deal. Come on, come on. For the storyline, for the culture. What's his date of birth? Jake Hall, don't let me down. And there you go, 2006, June 29. Just like that, Deeney's regen is now in our ranks. The club would want me to be resourceful. Right here, I've kind of sacrificed a player to lure another signing. Yes, it's just a famous Sir BCHD swap deal for the American Wiley. He's arriving from Atlanta United and Caleb will be joining us for £1 million pounds, plus Funkardi Dabo headed the other way. The left-sided 19-year-old will come in clutch as the American can play at left mid and left back. He's showing great potential. Now, in order to be the best, we've got a poach from one of the best academies in world football. And that is none other than Manchester United. We're doing our shopping in Carrington and we've managed to steal him for under his value. Ten Arg has given away Daniel Gore for under a million pounds. And this could be the deal of the summer. What an absolute baller he could be in the future. And I'm sure he is going to make a name for himself down in League One. Dini looking happy as ever to secure this signing. 840k. We are in dreamland right now. Now we had to settle some deals on the sales front in order to raise some funds. Dini's guided them out the door and one of them was one of our best attackers. Jordan Garrick who will be joining Bristol in the championship at 950k and Ryan Innes will be packing his bags for France getting 410k out of that deal so just over a million pounds added to the budget. Now we've had to go big or go home because Deeney wanted a statement signing. He wanted to make his intentions clear and not make this third tier out of their reach, out of their depth. The Rovers have another gem to add to the Infinity Gauntlet and it comes in the form of an Argentine striker, Castro. You already know with a name like that, he is just going to be a cold-blooded killer. And the man, he's just got aura. He's just got presence about him. And he also doubles up as a right winger. Santiago, welcome to the club. Arrives from Brighton for 3.3 million. And we have set the club transfer record right there with our brand new number 11 signing on the dotted line. Yeah, Castro and Dini's region in up front. That strike duo has big boots to fill. But oh my days, the potential is off the charts. You can just feel something special this season brewing as Kiarodia is now our new captain leading from the back. Dini has absolutely drained the transfer budget down to zero. So this all better be worth it. Otherwise, he's facing the sack. League one, piece of cake for Forest Green and Dini's men are going up. Say we are going up. Promotion is secured as the champions this time, 91 points, and they've done the double. For the first time in club history, the Rovers will be participating in the championship, and we're going up alongside Derby County. The league success is coming in thick and fast, but over in the cup, there was no deep run in the FA Cup over in the Carabao. Eliminated early on in round two to Bournemouth 4-1, and in the EFL Trophy, a round three elimination to Colchester. But all that is neither here or there, 
because the Rovers are champions of the third tier. They've now doubled their worth in two seasons from a one and a half star team now to a three star rating. They were standing on business all right. The championship, here we come. Trust the Argentine up top was worth every single penny. With 15 goals for Castro, Sam AA with 15 as well. Stevens in off the bench with 13. And Dini's region having a breakout campaign. 10 goals and one assist for Jake Hall. Gonzalez was doing his thing on the right. Baraguayan with six goals and six assists. And Stamenic in his assist bag, fitting into that deep line playmaker role. The Kiwi, he is putting up some glorious numbers alongside Lennon Milo, who's coming along nicely only at 18. And the captain, two goals and one assist for the Italian at the back. I've only just realized, but this random free agent I found in season one, the Northern Irishman, he's built like a Polynesian security guard. Borough screen have entered the chat, and we are about that life. Scrubbing up nicely for the 25 slash 26 season. And for this club's debut stint in the second tier. We have around about six million pounds to play around with. Things aren't getting any easier. Dini and the boys are out here fighting for their lives. Now we're all well aware that the championship, it's one of the toughest leagues in the world. There's nothing like it. It's extremely competitive and in order to compete, we're gonna have to, you know, improve our squad depth and quality. And that's why I've gone for the young up and coming Danish center back, Tobias Slotsager, arriving from Odense for 1.8 million pounds along Side, some more depth for our attacking department. We've pursued another South American winger. I don't know, there's just something about them. They got that flair, that vibe, as this up and coming wonder kid, Venezuelan, will become a forest screen rover. David Martinez arriving from Managas SC for 3.2 million pounds. Damn, he does definitely look like a teenager in his profile photo. Our new number 29 is championship ready. And what me and Dini love about him is that not only can he play on the left, but he can also do a shift in the middle at cam or on the right wing and he's even an upgrade on Amo Amior. So to be honest lads, I think we've hit the jackpot here. We are on struggle street when it comes to the type of players we want to purchase. We just don't have enough assets to sell off. I should have probably prioritized promoting that youth academy squad we had but they've all been released. They've all been removed from the academy whilst we were simulating. So we've had to sell off some of the forest green OGs. You've just got to get these type of players off the wage bill. Now another aspect of climbing the divisions is that we need some experience. Like this team can't just all be kids and amazing youth talent. We need some wise figures in the locker room, let's say. And because of our limited funds, I've had to just get this little couple of free agents to help us out at the back, to fill in multiple roles when we need them. And you might be able to recognize this guy. It's Timothy Fosu Mensa. He's joining Dini's Rover gang on a free, and he's just an absolute steal. You can play at right wing back, right mid, and center back. The Dutchman is an elite quality championship player in his prime, alongside another older center back, and it's the 28-year-old Gartenman. Shoring up our depth and quality has got us up to 30 players on the team roster. And this is how Dini's Green Brigade are heading into Season 3. Going to be a tough task. I'm not expecting the triple promotion. We've mainly mostly kept the starting core that got us promoted in the first place. So here goes nothing. This is the real test for Dini now. This FGR project has taken another major leap towards success as they've come through finishing in ninth spot in Championship. Just missing out on the playoffs by 5 points. Above the middle of the pack they are challenging towards those top spots as it was Brentford and Burnley getting those top two spots to get promotion to the Prem and it'll be Luton Town repeating their 2023 success and being the third promoted squad. 71 points is absolutely huge and like I said don't really care about how we get on in the Cups as it was a round 3, 3-1 elimination to Cardiff in the FA Cup and the Carabao there was no deep run like in season one a round one exit this time to Bolton. You've just got to see the vision and they are becoming a surprise package on the English footballing landscape. No promotion for the first time in this rebuild, but that's all right because our boy Santiago Castro is still banging them in week after week, netting 17 times this season in all competitions. We had David Martinez on his debut, the Venezuelan with 10 goals and one, and I'm also still impressed with Amo Amior. The Saints youth product still managed to conjure up 11 goal contributions despite us signing more competitions. The Troy Deeney region, Jake Hall, he might just be the real deal people. Seven goals and one assist as Enzo Gonzalez, our Paraguayan prodigy with five goals and ten assists. Fosu Mensa leading by example. We changed the captain's armband and the Dutchman secured four goals and four assists from right back. And Lennon Miller's ten goal contributions just continues to impress me. Moulin, our French shot stopper, donning the man bun, has earned himself seven clean cheats in 47 appearances. Dini has got his eyes set on not only playing in the Premier League, but managing. Could season four be the campaign where the miracle happens. And this team 
can become the first vegan club to operate in the Premier League. That would probably break the internet. That would be astonishing. However, anything is possible here in career mode as this season we have around £8 million to spend. So again, not really anything to write home about because the board and our financial situation aren't really doing us any favours. I've had enough of this financial situation not being rewarded for all we've accomplished on the pitch. I don't know, maybe I've got like a realism mod running in the background. Uh, to be honest, it's my bad, but okay, we, we're doing this the hard way and we're starting off season four by selling Caleb Wiley, the American, to Middlesbrough for 3.5 mil. Now, in order to better our case as proper promotion candidates, we had to pull off some major moves and it's been a common theme of this rebuild so far with limited resources. However, we've still managed to attract some top level talent and this guy is no exception. The Belgian Sabe is arriving from RB Leipzig, originally of Club Bruges and Dini's proud next to him, Kiriani joins us for, f you just tell that transfer fee, we're scraping every single last penny under the couch. You know we're in desperate times when you see a number that specific. We've given the green light to the Belgian that is going to be a major asset for us as he's not only a right back but can play at left back, do a shift on either side of the flanks and it's just a superb upgrade after Miley's departure. That's the last piece of business we're going to pull off so here is our general overview of our summer business. We've got a couple of sales like Wiley and more Taylor and some lovely little squad rotational additions to our attack like the Brentford Youth Academy product who was available in the free agency Michael Olakigibe. He's another one of these youngsters that can play on either side and for this kid we've got the young Turk Ken Uzun. Such a unique name as you can tell we don't play with a cam but for 4.8 million pounds the 20 year old is showing great potential and can also play as a striker. So that's the position conversion I'm hunting and I just want another option in there to pair up with Castro. Oh yeah you read that right it's all coming together. Season 4 will go down in the history books for Forest Green Rovers because they missed out on that automatic promotion spot losing to Leicester City and Middlesbrough. However with 89 points that was enough to secure third and a playoff spot and you just already know they went all the way to Wembley and clutched up in the most expensive game in football. Taking down Coventry 2-1 in the big dance. We are Premier League. Say we are Premier League. Deeney has done it. They've made it to the promised land. They ended up getting eliminated early on in the FA Cup. 3-2 to Liverpool in a round 3 replay. It was the furthest they've made it in a while losing out in round 3 to Crystal Palace 2-1. However this is all that matters right now. The playoff trophy. They took down Sheffield United 4-2 in the semi-finals. Three promotions in four seasons. Troy Deeney is cooking up something remarkable. All the numbers our promotion heroes were able to conjure and Santiago Castro was a top goal scorer. Now three years running the Argentine 22 year old is only going to get better. 30 goal contributions, 26 goals. The two South Americans up front, David Martinez with 16 goals and three and then Lennon Miller is transforming into a box to box Scottish king with 10 goals and 10 assists. Double figures in both departments. The only player to do that on the roster. Ola Kigbe actually played more of a cameo than I thought he was going to do. I thought he was just going to be an impact sub off the bench but 8 goals and 5 assists in only 27 appearances is quite impressive and then our Paraguayan powerhouse Gonzalez with 13 assists and 5 goals. The vegan club is cooking up something and it's not meat but whatever they're feeding them, whatever grass protein or veggie smoothies they're consuming between training sessions, it's working and this RTG is starting to rev up we have reached that glorious moment. Now the Rovers are up here competing with the big dogs. It would be a travesty if we're not rewarded for making it to the Prem and that is a hefty 41 million pounds in the bank. That's the most money we've seen so far. I'm starting to rub my hands together because we can work with that. Now in the Prem, it's do or die. Only the best survive, so we're putting our newfound money to good use. So we're investing in a new strike partner for Castro in up top, and it's the Portuguese hitman Ribeiro. A top quality signing that we've had to put in our Turkish failed experiment in the mix in the trade deal, plus 22 million cash. We've somehow got the best end of that deal and A rating. The goal is salvation and this guy has goals galore written all over him. Him and the Argentine up top are just gonna tear it up. The goal is salvation but we'll stay dreaming as I did realize we need some backup for our Kiwi King Stamenich. And the cavalry have arrived coming in the form of the Belgian brute Mbamba. Noah arrives from West London coming through for 16.5 million pounds and that's pretty much our entire budget gone. And just because we've made it to the top doesn't mean the exit door is closed. We have some dead wood to get rid of still when we've made it to the Prem. He's been here from day one. Bernard is off to Charlotte for 670k. We're still operating on some low-key moves in the background. So here's a quick fire summary of all of our transfer dealings.
feelings. We've had to part way with a couple of day ones, but it is what it is. A few departures taking place, but most notably upgrades and first team starters implemented. And Barbmo could also do a shift at center back, so Phillips' starting spot might be in jeopardy. However, with the quality and just youthful talent we have, we should be able to steer clear of the relegation zone and avoid a dogfight down at the bottom of the table. We are staying up, so we are staying up, say so what? Yeah, Dini's forest screen up in 13th, but with a respectable 50 points. I mean, we're up there with the likes of Chelsea. And one more win away from entering the top half. That is more than respectable. That is a solid debut campaign in the top flight, as it was Brighton, Burnley, and Middlesbrough, all to go back down to the championship. And winning the league was Man City with 81 points. It was an unfortunate round five elimination to Norwich 1-0 in the FA Cup. So again, these domestic competitions haven't been doing us well besides the Carabao Cup, where Spurs got the better of them 3-1 and dunked them out of the competition. There is no European football to look forward to for now. That's our top performers, the reliable men of the squad. Again, it's got to be Santiago Castro up top with 17 goals, no assists. His specialty is fine in the back of the net. When you take a look at things, no one's really carrying the squad, quote-unquote. I mean, Ribeiro had a decent debut start, 12 goals and 3 assists, but everyone else, it's kind of balanced out between a whole bunch of players here. You've got Miller with 8 goals and 9 assists from deep in midfield. Our box-to-box -box Scotsman also being the best playmaker at the club. We've got Martinez with 8 goals. Him and Ola Kigbe are just killing it on the left-hand side. Hall off the bench is proving to be a decent threat. And Enzo Gonzalez, who we've relied upon for so many seasons now. And this is the stuff you don't get to see behind the scenes. The boring admin work of just renewing every single player's contracts. It's that time of the rebuild, people. On the club's mission to becoming a Premier League staple, they've put a decent little case together for themselves. Now it's time to push even further up the table and potentially maybe even challenge for Europe if we're feeling it. And what have I done to deserve this blessing? We have around 80 million pounds to go crazy with this summer. And to be honest, I don't really know what to do with it. I think we've set the solid foundations. Now it's all about upgrading the team and just prioritizing first team reinforcements. If you're a career mode enjoyer like myself, you know how, how, how important having a good first team shot stopper is. And we're making an outstanding up upgrade in between the sticks. Spending the big bucks and this is our most expensive signing to date. It's the six foot six Georgian unit Mamar Stavili and he looks really weird in that sponsorless forest green keeper kit. But it is what it is. We're up now baby and we've pursued him from Lens over in France for 44.1 million pounds. Got him in a little bit of a cheaper deal considering his contract was expiring soon and at 86 overall he takes the podium. And there was just no way you could have ignored this Romanian giant this season. He is killing it at Genoa. The former Juventus Academy player that has reignited his career it is Radu Draguzin. He's been a career mode favourite for a while but this season he's just taken off potentially even making a January move to Spurs. Who knows? But for now the man bun king will be joining us at the back and becoming a brand new starter alongside Kia Rodia. And for £32 million we were able to budget and negotiate an excellent deal with young boys. This is a moment in history people. Two major investments that that we need to pay off if we want to win this club their first piece of proper silverware. And look guys, I can't ignore it. I can't, I gotta acknowledge these guys, the backroom staff, the coaches we've hired over the years. They've definitely taken up part of the budget given a minuscule amount, but they've helped us tremendously in getting the best out of our players and helping everyone grow. Now there's some expectation. We've spent the money and the bar is set. All I can hope for this season is that we don't suffer some second season syndrome. Hmm, can you guys taste that? It tastes like our first piece of silverware. Silverware, baby. That's right, cue the celebrations, pop the champagne, because Deanie's Forest Green Rovers are FA Cup champions. What a sight to behold. It's so nice just to have a trophy to add to the cabinet. And it's party time, baby. But how did we do it? Oh, my days. What kind of final was this at Wembley? It was a massacre. An eight-goal massacre, in fact. 6-2 against Chelsea. Damn, I guess the changing of the guard is really happening in English football as the Rovers are up in third, rising up 10 places compared compared to last season, and that is Champions League qualification. They've skipped past the other two comps, and it's straight into the UCL for Deanie's boys. As you can see, there is a quality gap there between them and the champions. Man City with 95 points. It was a one-horse race. Aston Villa in second. Arsenal crack out the top four, but so many of the original big six are just out of that realm. And on the final day, we didn't just confirm our qualification, but we also won the cup, and we're so close on having a Carabao Cup finals berth, an easy win an easy layup against Stoke City but lost out to 
Fulham in the semis on pens, so we could have had a double delight. Nonetheless, we take it on the chin and reflect on the successful season that was. 12 clean sheets for our Georgian in between the sticks, and you can already tell he had a seismic impact upon the squad, and this was the season where our Portuguese hitman just exploded. 20 goals and 6 assists for Ribeiro up front, 17 goals for Castro, his right-hand man, and David Martinez, our Venezuelan, is starting to shift gears. 13 goals and 3 assists, and it was double figures in both departments for Lennon Miller. 22 goal contributions for the Scottish, and it was 20 goal contributions for Enzo Gonzalez. He's now the first player to hit 90 overall, and our most valuable. He's the MVP in every regard, but we've got the players operating in the background, the quiet achievers, of course. And I mean, I'm just loving the way this team is looking, the way things are coming together. FGR are now an institution. They're announcing themselves as a major threat, not only in England, but in Europe. Bring on the Champions League. Dini wants your best. And with season seven up next, we are back up. Come on, man. We're competing in multiple competitions. European football board, back me here. 110 million pounds. I mean, it's sizable. It's good enough, but we need to bring the right recruits in if we want to compete on multiple fronts. Now, I don't know if spending this much money on a luxury position is a wise financial move, but I'm willing to take that risk. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I've loved Fosu Mensa. He's been a free agent cult hero, the captain of the club for so long, but we desperately need an upgrade in that position. And replacing a former Man United player with a former Man City player just tickles me the wrong way, but I couldn't pass up on Rico Lewis. He's arriving from Napoli. We've had to bring the big bucks out for him. 87 million pounds for a right back. I might be out of my mind, or this could be a genius move. A product of their academy and probably the only good thing their academy has ever produced. Still only 24, 87 rated is an incredible upgrade and can also do a shift at CDM. So what's not to love? Where do I sign? And we're able to just sneak this one over the line. He's a player that's emerged into a career mode Road to Glory favourite in recent months. It's the young Swede bursting onto the scene, Bergval. I've literally, I don't know anything about him. All I know is that he's got a good potential and right now in this career mode, he's going to serve us and be a brilliant backup. We've included Daniel Gore in the move who hasn't really developed it like I hoped. A player plus cash swap deal. You already know how we do things over here. Throwing in just over 20 million pounds, you already know he's going to be a brilliant squad rotational player. And the Scandinavian actually was on my radar for quite some time. On the shortlist this entire rebuild, but I just haven't had the opportunity to sign him. From being down in the dumps of the football leagues to being drawn out of the hat in this Champions League group stage draw. Forest screener there. Slotted in to Group D alongside Juventus, Porto, and Villarreal. So that is a baptism of fire right there. This season, it's different though. We're spearheaded by two top tier signings. And with the rest of our funds, we basically just renewed some contracts, made sure everyone was happy behind the scenes. And now we've got the squad at our disposal to compete on every front. With the curtains closing in on lucky season seven, the boys have backed it up and finished third two times in a row. This time, there's only 11 point gap between them and Manchester City for the league title, but it's well and truly comfortable top four territory. Dini's men also managed to launch the season with a 4-1 win in the FA Community Shield and over in the FA Cup, they actually went back to back in that as well. Take it at home at Wembley, doing the double over Manchester City in these big games, but when it came to the league, that was a different story. And the Carabao, could they make it three? No, obviously no domestic treble, but a nice little domestic double as this Forest Green Man City rivalry is really starting to rev up, getting knocked out by the citizens in the quarterfinals of the Carabao. So we're starting to see some drama there as their debut campaign in Europe, it was a top of the table finish, qualifying them for the round of 16 where they took down Sporting Lisbon 5-4 on penalties to book their quarterfinal spot and it was a 4-3 aggregate loss to the Gooners, who actually eventually made it all the way to the final, losing out to Barca 2-1 in a 2006 rematch. Top 4 secured again, back to back in the FA Cup, two pieces of domestic silverware. The boys are absolutely running amok right now and the puzzle pieces are slowly starting to fit together as Ribeiro has claimed his spot on top of the throne, our top goal scorer, not only with 33 goals, but 44 goal contributions. This Portuguese man, Mountain, it's all come together at the right place at the right time. Castro's become second fiddle, but is still a reliable source of goals. 25 goals and two for him, double figures for David Martinez. One of the only players on the roster to do so, the Venezuelan, 16 goals and 10, 9 and 12 for Miller in midfield, and Gonzalez, who is like a Ballon d'Or quality player, world class. You expect a little bit more production out of him, but we have so many options when it comes to goals, and our production is coming from everywhere, all over the pitch. Four goals and one for the Kiwi captain. As we go down to Rico Lewis's debut campaign, one goal and three 
three assists from the right back. Bergvall managed to fit in a few cameos in the meantime. And in between the sticks, only 11 clean sheets for Mamar Stavili. Our defense not really helping the Georgian shot stopper out too much. Nevertheless, we move. Season 8 is calling. And Troy is looking to go one better. He knows he's got a good thing going right now. And he needs to strike while the iron's hot. The team momentum is hitting its peak. And it's now or never if we want to take home the Holy Grail. Now, if I said last time I was confused and didn't know what to do with our funds, this time I am definitely stumped. I've got no clue what I should spend 145 million pounds on, but it's there. Now you're starting to see the financial reward with all of our efforts, but like we've kind of built the pillars. All the foundations are in place. As you can see, pretty much all of our starting 11 called up to a World Cup duties. Now it's time to actually go ahead and execute. And to execute they did, finishing runners up in the league to none other than Man City, of course. That's a 15 point gap between first and second. Uh, this Premier League title is going to take a whole lot if they are to get the best over City in a, in a season. As they did launch off the campaign, winning the Community Shield again, this time on pens at Wembley. So in these one-off games against City, somehow they get in the job done and they fumbled the FA Cup to Nottingham Forest 3-0. It seems like Wembley is just their cursed place. But in round six, they put us in our place and knocked us out 3-2. Over in the Carabao Cup, it was a Manchester derby. And again, Manchester City choke in these big finals, yet in the league, they just walk it. Such a strange trend I'm noticing here, but we were eventually eliminated in the quarterfinals 2-1 to Manchester United. However, instead of the domestic front, we focused our energy on the continental scene and in Group H, we came through actually in second with Atalanta Sevilla and Victoria Pleasant, qualifying for the round of 16 again, and we were against Dortmund in a 4-3 ag win, clutching up against the Germans, and it was a 4-2 win against Napoli in the quarters to see us win it out on penalties against AC Milan 5-3 in the second leg. What a moment, what a run, and who else could it be? Who other than Man City in the big dance? In 2031, the Champions League final is an all-English affair. I thought I was looking into it too deep, the drama between these two clubs now, but now it's bubbled to a major European final and taken place at Old Trafford of all places. This could be gigantic. This could shape the history of football forever, and the cream of the crop, the vegan cream, has risen to the top. Under the guidance of Troy Deeney, we're taking a look at the players that got us there and a set for an epic battle tonight. It's Rebeiro again on top with the goals 22 this time. Less output but more players stepping up to the plate like David Martinez again. Our Venezuelan 21 and 4. Gonzalez coming through with 13 goals and 12 and Lucas Bergvall out of nowhere. The Swede has overtaken Miller a part of our core from day dot. He's risen above him in the pecking order. That is a plot twist I didn't see coming but the Swede providing 12 goals and 7 assists. Santiago Castro even though he's in his peak right now. He's a 90 overall. The goals and assists dried up a little bit. I hope that's not the case for tonight. As Dini's regen, we've had him ever since season two. Seven goals off the bench for him. A little super sub. And the leader, the boss man on the pitch. Three goals for Marco Stamenic. A free agent hot shot we snapped up early on. And he's proven to be a quality long-term investment as we scroll down towards the end of the list. Our trusty Georgian shot stopper better have an extra clean sheet in him this year. Him and our number two, Moulin, actually shared the post this year with 14 clean sheets between them. And in season eight, our highest valued player was of course Enzo Gonzalez, the Paraguayan now with a mighty price tag of 154.5 million. We have three players in that 100 mil club. What's Pep got cooking up then? Oh my days, what am I witnessing right now? We've got the captain Bruno Fernandez. Harlan and Foden both still there. I am actually lost for words. Has, has Pep Guardiola converted Eda Militao into a, into a goalkeeper? We might be in for an easy night here if Pep sticks to this starting 11 because Edison's injured. I don't actually think they have a goalkeeper. Look at their bench. They don't have a goalkeeper. Man City do not have a goalkeeper for the Champions League final. No wonder why they choked all those finals. This has to be some kind of early April Fool's joke. There is no way Peppers let this... If we lose tonight, if we lose tonight, I will never play FIFA again. I thought this was a brand new glitch I've just discovered. What, they couldn't sign a free agent? Couldn't call anyone up from the academy? Eda Militao is their solution for this goalkeeper crisis. Nevertheless, you've still got to beat what's in front of you. And here is our trusty starting 11. We've given Bergvall the start over Miller. Otherwise, it's pretty much everyone you've come to know and love. With Troy Deeney at the wheel cooking, I still can't get over this situation I've found myself in. Like, this is why I love Karimo. Just these crazy situations you can 
opening counter. It's Pep versus Dini, and it's all going down on the red half of Manchester. We're playing in their own backyard, but Forest Green is here to take over. The death stare at each other. They, they don't want to get too comfortable. The prophecy is true. An 89 rated Militao in between the sticks. This is going to be fun. Get Harlan to kick us off here. Let's do it. Fires through to Bergvall, who somehow gets the better of the ball and the bounce has suited us here. It's Bergvall. All of a sudden, the Swede has risen to be a Forest Green legend in the space of two seasons. And the cutback from Gonzalez, it was a beautiful piece of team goal action. A slice of luck. Militao had no chance at his far post. And Dini's men are 1-0 up. And if we don't win this, we'll be the laughing stock of not only England, but all of Europe, possibly even all of the world. Passes it off, and Mamar Stabili with a brilliant save. That could have well and truly been the equaliser. Bruno Fernandes, I never thought I'd see him playing at Old Trafford in blue. But here we are, stranger things have happened, don't you worry. Over to Gonzalez, and I'm sure anything from distance is going to trouble Militao, and it did. What is on the bottom of my screen? From distance, anything on target is probably going to trouble Militao, to be fair. So, put some decent power on it, get some bend behind that, up and over the wall, and Militao just turned into Superman back there. Surely he won't be able to deal with the high ball. Militao, perfect chance to make it two, and Dini knows it. And Rodri... Moving forward, but Kiarodia deals with the danger. And now Castro on the counter-attack. The Argentine has got pace. He's got men in the middle too. And Militao all alone stranded. It is Castro with a signature finish. We've been able to rely on him pretty much every season since we've signed him. And our Argentine cold-blooded killer has provided for us when we needed him most. He beat out the line of defense. He outsmarted Militao in between the sticks. I gotta feel sorry for the bloke. <laughs> He's diving the wrong way. Yep, this is your bad for trying to humiliate the Brazilian. And they want to go back. They want to half this deficit before we enter the sheds. And Mamash Tavili has to punch it in the air. Where's he gone? Oh, my goodness me. What a soft goal to concede. And it's Oscar Bob to header it home to an empty net. No wonder why he's got barely gotten any clean sheets this year. With mistakes like that, he's literally just punched it up in the sky, fell flat on his ass, and not bothered to come back up. Someone's tripped him over. And it's not even Christmas yet, but he's out here giving gifts like that. And Rico Lewis up against his former employers, and they're trying to kill the poor bloke. Big kick from Militao. I'm surprised he's got that in the lockup. The drop punt from the Brazilian. And the outfielder might have some more trouble to deal with here as Ribeiro makes his mark on this Champions League final. Our number 30, the Punisher, who saw the gap, exploited it. Given this is a very special scenario, but to go 3-1 up and re-establish our dominance is something we needed. Bruno now has made his way to the byline, cuts it back to Haaland, and he's about to pull the trigger here. The Norwegian gets one back, and it's the second for City 3-2 and our lead has never felt solid throughout this entire game and the blue half of Manchester is now starting to roar. We do not let this slip lads. We do not let this slip. Man City desperate for this equalising goal. Rodri from distance. Morton on for Fernandez. Got no clue who he is but watch him score the winning goal. Morton all of a sudden causing danger already and oh this is starting to get squeamish, people. And Dragusen v Haaland. It's been a lovely battle. He's looking for the delivery inside, but our defense still with it. How's that not a foul? Referee, this is match fixing Morton. Who is this kid? 3-3. Three, three. He's now the captain. He's been subbed on for Bruno Fernandes. He's letting us know who he is now. How that wasn't a foul. The referee played advantage. From 3-1 up to 3-3, three, three, it's game on. No, this is feeling real. No, I don't like this. I don't like this. Kiaro, the what a block. I don't like this one. Bid Morton nearly had the chance of the double keeper. Oh, we've got a double change here. Ribeiro coming off of the Dini region. And Ola Kigbe replaces Martinez on the left. We need to use our super subs here. Ola Kigbe has found some space here. And the Dini region has made a nice little run. Can we settle it in the 90? Ola Kigbe on number 10 with the shot on target. That's all we needed. And Forest Green Rovers might be on the podium already. Get the green and black ribbons and paint them all over the town because it's a stoppage time winner. Yes, I know a five foot nine Brazilian centre back is in goals but that wasn't my fault. That's not my choice. Pep picked his battles. He's made his bed. Now he's got a lie in it. It wasn't the best of finishes from Michael but we'll take those. And probably the most important goal he's ever going to score. And the referee puts the citizens out of their misery. They have fumbled three major cup finals this season and two of them have come from our doing. Dini's Green Rovers are champions of Europe. Champions of the world. And what a journey. What a classic 
classic RTG rebuild that's been. Now, this is probably going to be my last video of 2023 or possibly even the first of 2024. But I just want to genuinely say thank you guys for watching my content this year. Thanks for sticking by the channel. You lot and your comments and your support definitely kept me going through some of my hardest times uh, throughout this year. Not to get too uh, down on you guys, not to get too personal. But as some of you know, I did rupture both my ACL and MCL way back in July. And it's been kind of like a bump in the road type year for me. I appreciate you all watching the channel and showing your love. From the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you a lot. I'm wishing you guys a happy new year, successful 2024, and I legit just can't wait for next year. So here's to more memories, here's to more blessings. I hope you can get the picture and understand where I'm coming from. But as for me, I've been your boy, Sir BCHD. Drop the video a like on your way out, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any content coming to the channel. Have a great day, happy holidays, and I'll see you all next year. Bye.